Hello and welcome to online worship with St. Luke's United Church. It is really good to be with you together in this way and thank you for making some time to center on God, to connect to the church um, and worship this way. My name is Rick Gunn. I'm the minister of this wonderful place and it's good to be together. Just a couple announcements before we get started. Um, starting on Wednesday, June the 9th at 7 p.m., um, so not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday, I'm going to start offering a weekly 15-minute Facebook Live devotion time. I'll just call it Wednesday Devotion. And um, it's sort of built on what Reverend Heather was doing with you. Uh, she would offer a midweek video message for you to watch. Uh, a difference will be that I'll do it on Facebook, St. Luke's Facebook page. So if you follow that page, um, then you'll automatically get a notification that it's happening. And if you know someone who doesn't have Facebook, they don't need to have Facebook to see this. They just need the link. Um, so Elaine or I will be sending that out very soon. And it's just a 15 minute time to pray, to reflect on a question uh, or some artwork, um, have a little music, and just to sort of connect through the week during this pandemic time um, and just nurture our spirits together. So um, let me know if you have any questions about that but, uh, and stay tuned to Church at Work for full details. Also, you've seen in Church at Work that Elaine puts a little note that if you'd like me to pray for someone in the community by name or anonymously in the community prayer of our Sunday service, just firing off a message by email or text or a phone call before before the end of the day Thursday, because then I make my videos for the Sunday service. Um, and when we're back in person, of course, you could give me the name of someone to pray for right before the service starts. But for now, if you want to name a celebration or a concern or someone who is ill or in hospital, as long as, long as as long as you have their permission, of course, to do that. Or if you'd like me to pray for something in your own life. Get that to me by Thursday. And before we begin, a belated by one day, happy birthday to Jane Earl. I heard it was your birthday on Saturday. I hope I got that right. Happy birthday to you. Friends, let's prepare to worship God. There once was a man who said and did such amazing things that people began to follow him. And one day they asked him, Who are you? And he said, I am the light of the world. And let the sound of the singing bowl wash over you and guide you into a deep space for spiritual renewal and connection and rest and rejuvenation. And our opening prayer will be a verse of a hymn that serves, serves us well as an opening prayer. Let us pray. Open my eyes that I may see Glimpses of truth thou hast for me Place in my hands the wonderful key That shall unclasp and set me free Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me, Spirit divine.
Good morning. If we all take the time to connect to our inner source, though invisible, we all have access to that glorious word and that vibrant light. Immortal, invisible, God only wise, in light, inaccessible, hid from our eyes, most blessed, most glorious, the ancient of days, almighty, victorious, thy great name we praise, unresting, unhasting, and silent as light, nor wanting, nor wasting, thou rulest in might, thy justice like mountains, thy soaring above, thy clouds which are fountains of goodness and love. To all life thou givest, to both great and small, in all life thou livest, the true life of all. We blossom and flourish like leaves on the tree, and wither and perish, but not changeth thee. Thou reignest in glory, thou rulest in light, thine angels adore thee, availing their sight. All praise we would render, oh, help us to see. Tis only the splendor of light hideth thee. Let us play. It's uh, raining out, so the uh, raincoat is required. Jesus says, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. No one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. Another way to say kingdom of God is the realm of God. God so loves the world of people and animals and plants, creatures uh, and things that we can see and touch, so loves the world that everything becomes, well, soaked, drenched in love by God's Spirit. Jesus teaches us that the realm of God is here and now, maybe not fully, but it's like heaven and earth are kind of mixed together. And Jesus is the one who shows us that. And with the Spirit's help, uh, we might see the world as God drenched drenched in God, soaked in God. So water is a helpful way to practice seeing this way. Um, when we're baptized, we are drenched in God's love um, and blessing. But you know, in the United Church, we only use like a few drops right on the head, three drops. Um, but Jesus, when he was baptized, his cousin John dipped him in a river. So I got a little Jesus here. And we all know Jesus wasn't white, but this little plastic Jesus is. So let's just imagine to be God drenched is like being dipped fully and then soaked in water, like being fully baptized in the river. Water we can see, so it's a helpful image. Spirit we cannot, or can we? Let's play with uh, how to see the world as God drenched. Okay. So all winter long, like that, spring is a great time to imagine how to, to practice seeing the world as God drenched. Right, this tree here that I'm under, of course, only recently got all these leaves. Does the tree help us see the world as God drenched? Well, in the winter, this trunk these branches, no leaves at all. And then slowly over the last month and two, the buds came out, the life was flowing through the branches, and now it is drenched in leaves. It's amazing, it's astonishing, it's marvelous. You know, and if we do pause 
like under a big tree like this. And just imagine a few weeks ago, no leaves. And now there's leaves. That's astonishing. That feeling of astonishment is actually a sign that the spirit is working in us. To feel amazed and astonished is a sign of the spirit. But maybe that doesn't really work. Let's practice looking at something else. Something that helps us see the world is God drenched. Hmm. Bursts of color, incredible flowers. Not just green here, but pinks. And that huge burst of color is amazing. It's astonishing. It's like the spirit has blessed this plant. It drenches it in life. But not only that, bees and flies and other kinds of bugs are attracted to this burst of color. And the plant needs the bees and the bees need the plant and that kind of interconnectedness of life shows how astonishing the world is. Does a rhododendron help us see the world as God drenched? Then there's something tricky if we sort of play with the world being God drenched like this. As in this grass under my feet are lots and lots of ticks. I don't like ticks. But if we're gonna see the world as God drenched, do ticks count? Well, they're a form of life made on the planet, made by God, and so maybe God loves ticks because the ticks have life in them. And if you don't think about how gross they are, it's kind of amazing that they sit there in the grass waiting for food. <laughs> and when they feel my feet go by, they think, food. And they put up their little, you know, two front arms and they try to hitch a ride. They're trying to live. They're trying to survive. They're trying to thrive. And if I can at least see, see that, it is kind of astonishing. As much as I don't like it. So to see the world as God drenched isn't just about a beautiful tree. It isn't just about seeing the beauty in a rhododendron or imagining the water pouring us in the ocean, over us in the ocean or a river or in our baptism. It's in the tough stuff too. And that even makes me think, what about during hard times? And then I thought for some reason the, the hard time that popped into my head was Halifax explosion. When the two ships collided, the Imo and the Mont Blanc in Halifax Harbor, and the two ships, the, ex the, the, the explosion that then sent all of this, you know, uh, chemical residue and the ashes from burning buildings drenched Dartmouth and drenched Halifax. Was the spirit there? Was that a God drenched moment? Maybe. Maybe what God was doing was drenching the whole situation in tears, in God's tears. Because we think of God as the heart of the universe and that Halifax explosion would have broken God's heart and drenched us all, drenched all of that community at the time in tears. And if the spirit is present, it moves through people at that time. And what do they do? The tears of God cause people to seek out their neighbors who might be under a fallen house, to provide aid and comfort and warmth and food and medicine. And if those things are happening, we know the situation is drenched in God. So as we go through our service today, can you practice seeing as someone who believes that the world is drenched in God? that the world is born of water, that we are born of water and the spirit, which means we live in the world in a very special way. A rhododendron is not just a rhododendron. It bursts with life. A maple tree is not just a maple tree. It bursts with God. And when we are baptized, we are soaked, saturated, drenched in the love of Christ and the love of the creator of the universe. 
May we all become <laughs> God drenched. I should probably accept that it's raining and just let it happen. The spirit of life is everywhere, ever-present. I invite us all to do our best to stay connected to spirit and to stay in the flow. Spirit of life, come unto me. Sing in my heart all the stories. Today's reading is John 3, verses 1 to 17. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, You must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Word of God for the people of God. <sighs> what am I going to tell them? <laughs> They'll think I've lost my mind. 
for sitting down with him in the middle of the night. But they're a good group of rabbis, always curious about God and always trying to deepen their faith. Most of them will really want to know what Jesus said to me. Some are still pretty upset about the mess he made in the temple yesterday, driving out the money changers and the animals and flipping over tables. No one's cleaned that mess up yet. But more than the actual mess he made, he messed with our minds. Destroy this temple and I'll raise it again in three days. What? He has a way with words. What am I going to tell them? I don't know why I went to the temple last night. I couldn't sleep. I don't feel quite like myself these days. Everyone is so stressed and afraid and anxious and exhausted. Everything keeps changing. I didn't know he was going to be there, but in the moonlight, I knew it was him right away. And when he saw me, he sat on the floor cross-legged and brushed some straw that had been on, you know, left over from the animal cages and cleaned a spot and gestured for me to sit with him like he knew I was coming and we were going to have some time together. <laughs> I hope I do that when people speak to me. I hope they feel like Nicodemus really made time for me. <laughs> well, I wanted to honor him to start, so I called him Rabbi. And we've all seen or heard of the signs that he has performed, and it's clear that the presence of God is with him. No, not everyone is going to agree, but I can see it. So I called him Rabbi, respect and honor. And then he spoke, very truly, I tell you. We all know that phrase. <laughs> when we hear that, it means, I am not exaggerating. I am not telling little lies to protect your honor. I am about to say something completely real. And then we just riffed for a while. He said, no one can see the realm of God without being born from above. And I caught that image of being born. So I played with it and said, well, how can we be born after we have already aged? Can we enter the womb again? And I think he liked that because then he said, no one can enter the realm of God without being born of water and the spirit. And I think he was playing with water as the world that we can see and touch and the spirit as God's presence we can't see. And maybe the two mixed together in God's realm like flesh is flesh and you can live like there's nothing amazing or holy about that, which he later called perishing. Living like material things are not part of God is perishing and spirit is spirit. But if you live like spirit is something that doesn't come into the material world, well, that's kind of like perishing too. But like the wind just pours over everything it touches, heaven and earth mixed together and really are one through God. And if we live like that, if we see with those kinds of eyes, then we might have eternal life. We might be saved from perishing. We might be saved from seeing everything as separate and limited and finite and confined to its own being when actually everything and every one are joined and fused and unified by the Spirit. And he told, he told me all this, I think, because he wanted me to see this way so I could enter life in a new way. So I could take all that I am, all that I already believe about God, and expand my faith. So I could be saved. And because he gave me this new teaching, it's like I am saved through him. Eternal life given to us, now seeing God everywhere. And all of this because God loves the world. God loves the world. Everything about my time with Jesus in the darkness felt like love. He sat with me. He listened to me. My many questions. 
He looked me straight in the eye. He gave me his full presence. He who calls himself the son of God telling me I need to go back into the womb of creation to be born anew well, invites me into the love space of everything, of the cosmos. And if I'm born anew, then he and I and God are family. Love dripped from every word. What goes into the womb, comes out of the womb, makes family cosmically and I know family can have happen so many ways but this is the metaphor he was playing with I nearly burst out laughing when he said do not be astonished do not be astonished how could I not be he was saying all of creation is a holy family that God's love and power is more accessible than ever before closer and more available than ever before God loves the world so much that God has come to be right here you know and right here do not be astonished I am 100% choosing to disobey Jesus I am going to allow this astonishment I want to soak it in because it brings me into the mystery of life. The things I can't quite hold, but I seek after. The things I can't quite know, but I feel and know that way. Like the spirit going where she chooses, there is always mystery to life. And now that I have sat down with the Son of God, I will swim in the astonishment. <laughs> this is the most alive I have felt in a long time. He mentioned Moses, a little shift, I think, to, uh, to language that I really understand. He's talking my talk. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That's what he said. Jesus is going to be lifted up like the bronze serpent that saved my ancestors if they looked upon it. Saved from the venomous snakes in the desert of their exile. I don't really know <laughs> why he threw that in there. If Jesus needs to be lifted up before we can have eternal life, I guess he's going to be need he's going to be made low. He's going to be lowered, he's going to be diminished, he's going to be maybe dishonored somehow. And if lifting up is so important then the lowering must be really significant, really powerful. If we see Jesus lifted, then we see God everywhere. I don't know. Eternal life is ours. Now, how these things can be, it's going to take some time. <laughs> when I asked, how can these things be? He smirked at me. <laughs> well, what am I going to tell them? My faithful group of friends, I love them so much. Like, I suppose I'll tell them what I saw, what I heard, and what I felt. We'll clean up the temple first. I'm going to get the whole community to come, everyone, children too, and then with everyone there, because what he taught me is not just for rabbis, it's for everyone. I'll enlighten them with the story of my dark night sitting with Jesus in the temple. I'll invite them to sit. And I'll say, very truly, I tell you, the good thing about being up all night is that now I get to see the sunrise, a new day, a new start. I feel more like myself than I have in a long time. Thank you, God for coming so close to me last night. As the first rays of sun start to pour over the land, drenching everything with warm light, help me to see you everywhere. Amen.
child, I'd often watch the clouds and imagine I could fly. I could feel my body lifted up as it soared above the sky. But now I'm older, wise, mature, and I question what is true. There's one thing that I have often thought, how I'll feel when born anew. Well, the wind may blow and the spirit may lead, where it goes remains unclear. But when we see the God-drenched sun abound, it's the word of God we hear. And when the word transcends all living flesh, felt with joy and love it brings. Astonishing, astonishing. When I reflect upon the things I've heard, what was shared and taught in school, I remember words my teacher said, like when I learned the golden rule. Yet when I stared out on an ocean view, I would ask, how can this be? But then I learned the words that Jesus taught, how determine what I see. Cause the wind will blow and the spirit may lead, where it goes remains unclear. But when we see the God-drenched sun abound, it's the word of God we hear. And when the word transcends all living flesh, felt with joy and love it brings. It's astonishing. Cause the wind will blow and the spirit may lead where it goes remains unclear but when we see the god-drenched sun abound it's the word of god we hear and when the word transcends all living flesh felt with joy and love it It's astonishing, astonishing, it's astonishing, astonishing. Today is my fourth Sunday with you. In some ways, it feels like time is flying by. Four Sundays already. But in my first month, even though everything was online, I have really enjoyed uh, having a walkthrough of most of your teams and your programs, your committees. And as I am getting an image of who St. Luke's is as a church, I feel moved today to pray particularly for you. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you for blessing St. Luke's with people who really care about their church. Thank you for the people, your beloved children, who serve on the church council, the congregational ministry team, the trustee ministry team, and the outreach ministry team. These teams and the council are our ways of taking care of your beloved people, our church building, and our resources, so folks have a safe place to pray and play, to heal and grow. 
You know each faithful one by name, and we give thanks for the many hours of volunteer ministry offered by these fine people. We also give heartfelt thanks for the many other volunteers who minister with the Marguerite Center, Anna's Prayer Circle, Tea with Elsie, the Prayer Shawl Ministry, Square Roots, St. Luke's Market, Community Players, and all the ways we serve each other and the world. We thank you for those who step up with love and resources for emerging needs like the drywall needed for the hall. That goal has been reached because of people's readiness to help. Bless all St. Luke's volunteers and help us show love and gratitude to each person and ourselves for faithful work well done. As summer approaches, may there be rest and rejuvenation for those volunteers who feel tired and weary. May their stores be replenished. We hold also in deep love and appreciation the church staff, Elaine, Mike, Chris, and myself. Their dedication and care is so obvious and overflows with love for this place. God bless the staff. We hold in tons of love our children and the young people. As their school year winds down, bless them with rest and joy and happiness and fun and whatever they need to keep growing in love and life through what has been another difficult year. Holy One, I pray for each person watching this service right now. From St. Luke's and beyond, yes, you. May God's Spirit bless you in the ways you long for healing and wholeness and new life. As a community, we pray for those who do not use the online ministries of the church for those who feel disconnected because of the pandemic and other reasons. Help us to reach out as we're able and where we cannot offer connection, we trust your spirit will bless them and help them feel your love and ours. We pray God you continue to drench our church with love and blessing so we can pour out your love through Christ to your community and the world. With joy and sunshine in our hearts, let's pray together with unifying power the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we draw near the conclusion of our service, I sincerely hope that music continues to bring us together while we're not worshiping together and indeed touches our hearts. Come touch our hearts that we may know compassion from failing members build a blazing fire love strong enough to overturn injustice to seek a world more gracious come touch and bless our hearts come touch our souls that we may know and love you from quiet presence all our fears dispel. Create a space for spirit to grow in us. Let life and beauty fill us. Come touch and bless our souls. Come touch our minds and teach us how to Set free our thoughts to wonder and to dream. Help us to open doors of understanding and welcome truth and wisdom. Come touch and bless.
bless our minds. Come touch us in the moments we are fragile, and in our weakness your great strength reveal, that we may rise to follow and to serve. Steady now on earth, come touch and bless our May you be blessed with sacred sight, seeing God's world as fully blessed. May the teachings of Christ ground you and guide you, and may the wonder of the Holy Spirit be born anew in you today and every day. And let's sing together after I blow this out. Amen. Amen. Amen, 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 hallelujah, amen, 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 hallelujah, amen, 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 amen. See you next week.